Yellow Killer B, you're a big fan of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Daniel, who's not? You're a huge fan of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I put 300 hours into that game. I think so. Now, have you ever wondered where does Breath of the Wild fit in the timeline? Does it fit in the timeline? It does. El Nuno wow. said it does. But uh, you know my theory on it. Yeah. No, nobody. Uh, there's been a lot of debate about where does it fit on the timeline. Uh, do you have any guesses? On this, do you have any ideas in your head? Do you even care? <laughs> a lot of people well, just like it because it's a fun game. So, so, so the Zelda timeline. I actually found a infographic. I'm sure you guys have probably seen the same one, mm -hmm. where it's like here, and then oh, it splits off, and then yeah. this is like evil Zelda, or this or evil Link, or <laughs> this is the dead Link, and then he comes back to life, and then it's like, you need, yeah. like, a PhD to, like, <laughs> look at this flowchart and okay, figure I out where in PhD, the world in fact. So, I looked at that, I found it was very interesting, and then I immediately, as you can see, forgot everything about it, because uh, for me, yeah, I don't, I don't, I have no idea where it, I mean, probably before everything got flooded, right? So pre Wind Waker. Well, it depends which timeline. Yeah, it depends on the it splits. Timeline. I know. So, <laughs> so the. Well, you know my theory. Yes. Uh, is the dragon break? Daniel Daniel <laughs> thinks it's going to converge. Where it's it, a convergence it into oh, the three that oh, it's going to okay. come back. Um, yeah. So, for everybody that's still watching <laughs> uh, or listening, if uh, you were kind enough to download it off of iTunes or SoundCloud, this book is likely going to be the final solution. Nintendo has been very vague on where it fits on the mm -hmm. timeline. Al Numa always says that uh, the hints that he has given is it takes place many, many years after many, many battles with Ganon. And he's mentioned mm -hmm. that it does take place after Ocarina of Time. So he's always kind of been vague because that could technically be any of the three splits. And mm -hmm. my theory is that he's been vague because he knows this book was going to come out. This book, like Hyrule <laughs> Historia, um, there was the Arts and Artifacts book. Then there was Zelda Encyclopedia or Encyclopedia, Hyrule yeah. Encyclopedia. Now there is Masterworks. And Masterworks is supposed to be about everything with Breath of the Wild. And just as Hyrule Historia was the first official timeline... They revised the timeline, changed a couple of the games, the order that they go in with um, Zelda Encyclopedia. Now this book is coming out. And with it having to do with Breath of the Wild and with some of the other books first showing off the timeline, then revising it, I think this will be a third revision of the timeline where it finally shows off where Breath of the Wild takes place or at least tries to explain where it takes place. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's my theory that they have been vague on it because they want to push sales of this book because it's going to have the answer. It's not going to be the DLC coming out. Um, it's going to be this book is my theory. Uh, wh what do you guys think about this? I thought I read in an interview that Onuma said that he. Uh, I think it was pretty recently. I read somewhere there. He said he was undecided on where the game had taken place, and he was like. Well, we just decided to build a fun game first, and uh, we're not sure yet, but sometime <laughs> after everything else. Yeah. Um, or something along those lines. We'll see. The, but was, I still hold my theory. So. <laughs> there, there was the statement whenever A Link Between Worlds came out, everyone was like, well, we. Because I think that was the first game that came out that was new that took place after the mm -hmm. official timeline came out. It was, yes. And a lot of the fans was like, well, where does this game take place? A lot of people assumed it was after A Link Between Worlds, and then someone working for Nintendo was like, well, it doesn't take place in the timeline. It's a side story. It takes place in its own thing. But then two weeks later, Nintendo made an official statement saying, "Hey, this takes place directly after a link to the, or a link between worlds." Not. No, sorry, I was saying a link between worlds. I was talking about Triforce Heroes. Oh, yeah, right. People were yeah. confused about Triforce Heroes. A link between worlds. They did say takes place after a link to the past. Sorry, guys. Anyways. Triforce Heroes, they were saying, was a side story, didn't take place on the timeline. But then, like, two weeks later, they had an official statement where they said it... Like, they took back what they said and said it takes place directly after A Link Between Worlds. And it is also, in fact, the same Link from A Link Between Worlds. Mm -hmm. 
So I thought that was a bit confusing because they said it didn't take place in the timeline, then they said it did, and then with the revised timeline they mixed around the placement of uh, the Oracle games Link to the Past and Link's Awakening. Before it was the same Link in all four games, now it's two separate Links in the Oracle games. So nah. <laughs> I don't buy that personally because like there's if you at the at the end of the Oracle games he leaves on a raft and then a Link's Awakening begins he's on a raft. Just come on guys. No 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 no. It's, it's, it's solid. Not two separate. <laughs> it's it's foolproof. Undeniable evidence. <laughs> the raft. There's one nothing raft. you can say. <laughs> yeah. So um, no, I'm just I'm just messing with you. But so go on. What, what I was meaning there, to, so no one else misinterprets it. It's not two different links in the Oracle games. It's um, Link's Awakening and A Link to the Past was the same link. But then a second link mm -hmm. was in the Oracle games. Was what they revised mm -hmm. it to, I think. I don't know. It's, yeah. it's, no, it's I still, still, I still think they're the same one. But, but um, when you were talking about the, the diagram or whatever with the PhD trying to figure out the timeline, <laughs> I want to bring this up. Um, I have some friends in a YouTube channel called the 3GI that has, uh, they had their Smash Brothers video where they all dress up like, they cosplay as different Smash Bros characters and they get into an actual fight. Um, and in <laughs> one of them, they're really stupid, but they uh, had someone dress up like Pikachu and then there was another guy dressed up as Peach and Pikachu had a, an actual taser and shot Peach to use the electricity so um they've done some really dumb funny stuff but the funniest thing how i found them they had a video called uh a link to the future and it was a spoof of ocarina of time and back to the future where oh i've seen this video yes, it's they, hilarious they, they had uh, <laughs> doc brown come in to try and explain the timeline to link and then they like mm -hmm. To be extra funny, they added in, like, uh, Soul Calibur 2 and Smash Brothers and everything else just to try to make it even more confusing. But it, mm -hmm. it's really hilarious. You should check it out. It was the first video on YouTube that actually made me, like, stop it because I was laughing so hard. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. All right. So... Well, I, I just wait, think sorry? it's interesting because, um, like, when you think about, like, Zelda and Mario as, like, two big franchises... Zelda is like more story based of the two mm -hmm. and so I think that's what makes it tricky because it's like you actually have to fit these games with their stories into this like you know and you know they're not like planning mm -hmm. it out beforehand because they say that so they're like where does this yeah. puzzle piece fit in and doesn't like conflict with anything speaking of YouTube videos there was actually a really great YouTube video that did like the the Mario timeline and it was kind of tongue-in-cheek I don't know if you've seen that oh, one, yeah. but basically they would take like any tenuous thing of a Mario game and like at the end of one of the Mario Brothers, he's like, now it's time to go on vacation. And they're like, and then Super Mario Sunshine, because that starts off yeah. with them going on vacation. <laughs> and But it's funny because actually the Mario timeline would be easier to put together because those games don't really have much story to speak of. So yeah. really they can be in whatever they want with Zelda it definitely is a little bit more challenging, but the funny thing is Breath of the Wild probably had less story than any of them, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Like it just it it was more about the exploration in the world and the story was kind of told through the memories, but there it wasn't really heavy. And so maybe that'll make it easier for them to decide where it goes. Yeah, maybe. But there are like conflicting things with the like which of the three branches that it like fits into, because you have one thing talking about um, Princess Rudo, who was from in only the timeline with the child timeline in Ocarina of Time. Right. And then you have things talking about uh, things that are like only in the other timeline. And so it's like, I don't think they I think they were just putting in a ton of Easter eggs and they haven't decided and like while they were actually making the game like they just they were just putting a fun game together. And the timeline is an afterthought. A fun afterthought. I love it. But <laughs> yeah. Alright, well, I guess that brings us to the end of the news. And we yeah. can start on the questions. If you still have a little bit of time. We won't go on nearly as long with this. That's fine. Right. <laughs> um, so I have some questions listed. But I want to check really quick. Because you, you retweeted. And I want to make sure that I get some questions from some of your fans. How does that sound, by the way? Like, because you you said you had seven thousand followers um, on Twitch, which is like there's a huge difference in having followers on Twitch and YouTube to where like 
someone with like a hundred thousand YouTube subscribers may only have like ten thousand followers on Twitch because there's mm -hmm. like a, mm -hmm. just a huge vast difference. But I feel the followers yep. on Twitch are a lot more dedicated um, because there's not yeah. quite as many or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Like, does it feel weird for you thinking, wow, I have 7,000 followers on Twitch that tune in and watch me when they like, obviously not every single one is watching you at the same time, mm -hmm. but how does that feel for you? Because it gets a bit crazy for me thinking how many subscribers that we have. And then like the mm -hmm. other day, uh, well, it was like a week or two ago, I was at the grocery store and the girl in front of me had a Navi tattoo, Navi tattoo mm -hmm. behind her ear. And I was like, do I say hi? I like your <laughs> tattoo. And then we started talking about Zelda. And mm -hmm. uh, she mentioned, because we were talking about her tattoos, and she was like, yeah, just never grow up. Uh, if you get a real job, it'll ruin everything. And I was like, yeah. well, that's awesome, because my real job is talking about Zelda. And she gave me a weird look. And I was like, oh, I have a YouTube channel. And then she was like, I've heard of your YouTube channel. And I was like... <laughs> It was, she knew all along. It was one of those situations <laughs> where I was like, this person knows me because of something I've done. So how is it like that's so for you cool. with your, because uh, you have so many followers as well. What's that like for you? And have you ever been noticed out in public? You, you know, that's funny because uh, the first time I ever got recognized in public was actually in New York. And I was just out <laughs> on the street. And while I was there, I was having dinner with some other speedrunner friends who live in the New York area and I set that up beforehand and we were all standing kind of out on the curb deciding where we were gonna go and a guy just walks up and he's like hey I'm this person from your channel and I, and I was like oh and I totally knew like I recognized his name from the channel but I like I had never actually been recognized just out on the street before like at events obviously everyone's there and you all know each other but um, so that was the first time and that was just a couple weeks ago, but I live in a pretty, um, small town and so, like, usually people are like, they don't know what Twitch is, <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> oh. yeah, and like, as far as having 7,000 7, followers, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away that I, I've been able to get to that number over, over three years, and I just, I think a lot of it is being involved in community and being involved in events, kind of, you know, that, that networking between people definitely helps your channel along and boost it up. But because I just don't stream as often as a lot of people, I think that kind of tempers my growth a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Like I, I, you just kind of have to accept the place that Twitch yeah. has in your life because it's really easy to get sucked in and just feel like, man, well, if I could just stream, you know, this many hours a week, then I know that I could get this much growth. And it's, it's just like, no, I just have to like, keep my schedule and it, it works out for me pretty well yeah. and did you see a boost mm -hmm. in followers from the nintendo world championships or i did i got a little bump but it's interesting i got more like i got a lot of youtube subscribers because i think a lot of people were watching it on youtube and that was interesting because <laughs> i i really don't update my youtube um except to put up like speed runs so i don't like make videos for youtube um and so I, I like the content on there is fine, but it's not like what you guys do where you're actually like crafting videos for for YouTube use. And so I thought that was interesting, but I think it's just a lot of people weren't necessarily watching on Twitch. They're like watching on the website, and so they weren't necessarily already engaged in Twitch or had accounts. Yeah. But yeah, I did see a little bump, but it's funny because it was probably like like one tenth of the bump that I would get from a Games Done Quick event. And but that's just because it's running oriented and like more people are likely to be interested specifically in that i think all right well moving on to our questions uh we we've tried to come up with clever names for the different segments for the news or the interview discussion type thing um instead of having a discussion we had more of the interview with you this time uh but the only clever name that we've uh really settled on was for the mailbag uh because when i used to write for zelda dungeon they had what they called the curiosity shop because it was answering zelda mailbag curiosity with the questions it made perfect sense they stopped doing it and i was like i loved it so much because it was the only real interaction the people at zelda dungeon had with the community and that's one of my favorite things is when you see someone on youtube or twitch or whatever 
communicating with their audience, with their fans. That's my favorite aspect of it. Because there's a lot of people that have like 50,000 or 100,000 subscribers and they never talk to their people. Mm. And like their fans are the entire reason that they're able to do what they do, but they still have no interaction. So this is my favorite part of this. Um, so yes, uh, are we ready to begin? Do you guys got the questions up? Hopefully we can I get through these do. really quick. All right, so Jesse, yeah. you, who are you texting? I'm not texting. <laughs> I, I had a phone call. <laughs> it's one of his viewers. Uh -oh. They want to talk to you directly. Yeah. <laughs> Let me be on the stream, Jesse. Right. <laughs> so. The videos on this channel are funded by supporters on Patreon like you. If you're a fan of this channel and would like to join on videos, receive shoutouts, watch videos early, have your questions answered, or have your topic discussed on our podcast, please consider supporting on Patreon for these and many other rewards for just $1. Shoutouts for this video includes Link Use the Triforce, Rusty Caulfield, Lovable Christy, Give Time 15, Shadow to Us, Robbie Morgan, and Lunarium. I want to thank all of you for everything you have done to help support this channel.